I love cats. I love every kind of cat. I just want to hug them all. But you can't can hug, hug every cat. <laughs> can't hug every cat. <laughs> I am a cat lover and I love to run. <laughs> I'm thinking about cats again. I really love all cats. <laughs> Do you not remember that? <laughs> no. <laughs> We're all people. Well, imagine a podcast <clears throat> like Let's Get Into It. You've probably already switched off, but for anyone that is here for our actual conversation, I'm Connor. And I'm Becky. And together we are Another World Belfast. We've got a little message to show some love. And we're on fire today. Listen. I know. Oh my God. I Move know. over whoever does the news now. Hey, Sean. Hello, Hello Sean. Hello, darling. He's <laughs> doing well? Very well. Yes. Yeah. Well, do you know, we're at the Devonish at the weekend, so we're doing very well. Yeah. <laughs> I can, I can barely oh, no. walk. I can barely walk. We were talking about pushing babies oh, out there, imagine. That's, Somebody, yeah. That's, uh, that's taking a baby in. <laughs> That's the size of them. I so, saw somebody comment on Facebook earlier on that said that uh, their ma told them that they were on the BBC at the weekend, but they didn't realise that's what they were talking about. I don't know well on the fucking BBC. I bet you there were so many uncomfortable, I was going to say uncomfortable roasts. That is so funny. I bet, I, bet, I bet you there were so many uncomfortable roast dinners after the uncomfortable roasts yeah. at the Devonish. I have never seen dicks like them. <laughs> I'm I, sure you have. No, I haven't. <laughs> never. I would. I'd be out the fucking door. Yeah. If you get that out, I might touch it with my tongue. You know, sort of. I've, I've got this need today. Today, to, to, I was telling Sean before we started recording to lick the microphone, and it must be following. I bet it's following those fucking big cocks. Yeah. But I think uh, uh. possibly gay, maybe gay porn is sort of you know or gay sex work or whatever that is uh, labelled as gay entertainment work. Uh, yeah, it sort of doesn't really doesn't have that. It doesn't have that. That is. Know. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I've seen uh, so many strippers, so many Google boys. I have um, I have watched m- most that's available out there in oh, terms of I thought of you just... were talking about like the footage of the thing itself. I saw a few extra clips this morning than the one oh, I showed yeah. you. Yeah, somebody just walking around doing that. What do they call it? The helicopter? Oh. <laughs> I, the, one, the clip that I seen, the man was, um, was sort of uh, like uh, doing... What is that Simulating. <laughs> but he, so the one that you showed me, it was this guy and he was like doing press ups basically on someone's face. This yeah. sort of, this woman that probably works in accounting, <laughs> you know, that now has to go in yesterday and just be fucking scummered. At least you, you couldn't see her face because there was big, big cock and arse in front of it. So wouldn't you think though, those sort of things, you would want, you would, you would think that it was like no recording. Yeah. yeah, you know, because like, yeah. we are like we no matter what, no matter what, we still live. In, I'm 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 here for it. I, I think it's uh, wonderful. I think that people should be able to go out and uh, do whatever the fuck they want. Um, it's consenting but, adults, exactly. But you would think that it would be no cameras, not yeah. not because we're British, just because society big, is. Just because Big Susan, who works in the fucking chippy, is holding. A monster cock. Yeah, <laughs> like that's a fuck, that's a that's a battered sausage supper. <laughs> big yeah. fat Max. What's your What's your opinion on the big dick, Sean? It's, I think it's so funny because this is like a watershed moment for West Belfast. Yeah, you know what I mean. Apparently, it's south. Oh yeah, that's, they, they're, that's, they're, that's they're, what. Yeah, the, the, the yeah. Been. there's been a full row over. Actually, that's in the south. <laughs> no, it's well, sure it's west. It's, it's the bridge, but anyways, yeah. good. <laughs> People say it's after the motorway, so yeah. it's south. <laughs> oh. So I don't know. It's like because obviously in like seventies, eighties, like nineties, like West Belfast was very like Catholic and very like oh no, like very like. We grannies, you wouldn't do, yeah. you wouldn't mm-hmm. say boo, blah, blah, you know what I mean? Like, keep to yourself. Uh-huh. And obviously, West Belfast has sort of come into itself and, like, literally. Oh, and, wow. <laughs> wow. And, um, <laughs> that is rotten. <laughs> in fairness, it was the first time they let the Brits in. <laughs> oh, my God. And it's, like, um, a lot more open now, a lot more, like, West Belfast seems to be a bit more, like, I don't know. It's where fun Pro- stuff progressive. happens. Yeah. Like, more, yeah, we a bit more relaxed. Maybe. But it hasn't had anything like that yeah. yet. You know what yeah. I mean? So that was just like the moment. Like, because that could have never happened. Yeah. yeah. You know, before. 
So this is like the first time, like since things are a wee bit more progressive, that like something like that could have happened. So it's just I hope they blew back. the roof of everything. Yeah, I love to see the the sort of the public discourse on it to an extent, because I don't think partly that there should be any. It should just be a given that stuff like that happens. Mm. And there's two ways looking at it. Like on one hand, it's like so misogynistic, you know, because it's like I'm sorry, but what do you think happens on stag parties? Do you know so what I mean? It's, it's not the getting your dick out thing that's misogynistic. It's the fact that it's the people women that were are commenting interacting. on it. No, it's the people that were on the stage that are getting the shit. Nobody really cares about the men with their dicks out. It's oh. the women. It's oh, like, yes. would you ever scunder yourself? And actually, I just think people have paid for a ticket. Who cares? It's a human body. You know, we add all of this sort of shame and outrage mm-hmm. and all the rest of it. And it's like... Every country in the world does stuff like that. The reason mm-hmm. we don't is because we are repressed society, I, you know, mm-hmm. by the overt control that religion well, still has on by it. By that you know? same bloody Catholic yeah. church. But also by the, the Presbyterians as well, you know, and all the rest of them on that that lot are as bad, if not worse. But did we say that they're, they're all sort of equally problematic? Yes. Yes, that's yes great. exactly. Um, <laughs> Bruno has a wee, like, thing any time David Doherty jabs on now. Like, they've always said, but every time... They've mentioned the word problematic. They go, problematic. Oh, I love oh. it. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. <laughs> um, just while we're talking there. Um, <laughs> so uh, you mentioned Bruno Diamond. She's got a great podcast called Word Up. Uh-huh. Um, sometimes we're on it, sometimes we're not, unfortunately, uh, for the podcast. Um, we are soon actually going to be doing a, uh, well, we hope we're, we're in talks. Yeah. We're in, um, Her our, people are talking to our people. Yeah. Turns out all the same people. It's been at an impasse for a week. <laughs> Yes, so um, we're basically going to try to do some sort of like a crossover episode, which yeah. would be amazing. So we'll yeah. have a show some word up, or she might say word up, yeah. some love. Show some it's, word. It's like when Hannah Montana was on The Sweet Life of Second Coney. Yes, oh, it I is the ultimate get crossover. It. I'm too old. You don't get it. So the sweet, li- the sweet life of Zach and Cody. Um, I've seen the. Oh no! The only reason I know it is because Connor is one of Connor's hyper focuses on YouTube. Is, is Disney also kids. Disney Channel and like light entertainment from the years two thousand and two to two thousand and twelve. I, I, I just I really like it. I think the Disney company is really interesting. I think yeah. what they produce and how they speak to kids and how they. Uh, sell their product is um, is um, is wonderful. Um, I think uh, it's also very questionable, um, yeah. but it's it's interesting at least. You know, so uh, actually every time that you, every time you say the best of both worlds, uh-huh. the best then, of both worlds, and we are all as an organisation, <laughs> we're all for mutual benefit. You know, we'll get to a place where, where we're all happy and we're mm-hmm. all sort of getting something from it, and we're we can continue in future, so it's a wee bit more sustainable. One of the words you use within that, then, so we could be sitting speaking to anyone from some business owner to the executive, and you will say the best of both worlds, and I want I just want to sing that. Yeah, I want to give it like, cause it's the best of both of them. <laughs> going high, going low, something else. I never had Disney Channel. I never Aww. had it. I know. Aww. I know. But we just so like you're living your fantasy. Now. It's whenever it's whenever you would you would just you would have terrestrial TV, and then it was sort of like fancy to have Sky. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we just never we never had Sky. Or if we did have it, it was always with like kind of really shit programs like yeah. you could, or shit uh, channels not with any packages no you could see like Most Haunted was always on yeah. sometimes yeah. Sky One was on or off weirdly and they owned it isn't it funny how that is sort of going like we were watching Very Delta our podcast which is our favourite uh, yesterday we love it um, but there was they made a comment and I thought that's so true we've talked about it ourselves where it used so whenever so let me tell you about the olden days so whenever I was a kid you just you had Sky and you had but maybe the, the movie wireless. channel you, the only the actions were with the extra bits where you could get movies or not. Yes. But and in fact, I think whenever it first started, it was just all, and then they broke off movies, and then mm. they broke off sports, and then all of a sudden it's family package and the comedy package and the entertainment package and all the rest of it. Mm. And now we've kind of like kept going and kept going where we had cable and we had Sky and we have Virgin and all the rest of it, and comp- competition has entered the market. Now all of a sudden people are like, oh, you want the Kardashians? You got to have Hulu. Mm-hmm. You want uh, Drag Race? You got to have Wild Presents. You know, and yeah. now they're broken down even further, and people are just like. Fuck off. We, fe- we fell for it. <laughs> Fed up. We fell, yeah. for, we fell for like this £5 a month fantasy. Like, yeah. all we'll need, ever need is Netflix. But 
it it sort of it started to become shit whenever they started to buy back their uh, property. Yeah. So or, or when it, whenever other companies started to not buy it yeah. back but take it back, start so, their own streaming services. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so now there's Disney and there's Paramount and there's all those sort of bits. It's quite sad though as well because whenever you, whenever someone it's sort of it's killed that conversation a wee bit when someone's like, oh, so are you watching such and such? And it used to be that we all watched Netflix. something. Netflix. Yeah. Even Netflix if it was and all Prime. Netflix. Like, mm-hmm. I'm talking sort of years ago. Oh, why we you all watched. Uh, the X Factor or whatever, mm-hmm. but now uh, it, it's it's so commonly followed by oh we don't have that one. Mm-hmm. One just just to take it back to Dicks, um, if we could a wee second. Oh yes, mm-hmm. um, thank you, Sean. Uh, it Sean it's proper J. Yes, um, <laughs> of course. Not a dick. Lo- you, I wouldn't describe you as a dick lover. I'd say a dick enthusiast. How's I that? would say yeah. dick lover adjacent. You a know, dick- friends with many gays, but not sem- partial themselves. A smelly, <laughs> like a smelly, a sm- smelly, eh? Smelly. Wow. <laughs> Smell your own. Rotten. That is absolutely a rotten. A connoisseur <laughs> of peni. A connoisseur of peni, but flaccid. They're yeah. all flaccid. <laughs> Um, so I'm sure you were happy with um, with the, the Devonish the other night. But one thing, yeah. an, a, another comment on that as well is, I think that it's actually. I, I don't think. Are you allowed to get your dick out on stage here? Is that a question? I don't think there's. You, I think you can kind of do whatever you want as long as people are warned. Um, oh, because I, I always thought the thing with strippers is that they couldn't in public. In public, you can't obviously because well, you can't be nude, nude in public at all. But. Um, I always thought it was one of those differences between, I, I know it definitely was years ago, but it was one of the differences between um, uh, this part of the world and uh, the UK. And it was one of the differences that I always thought it would be amazing if we were to sort of really align our policies and, um, you know, really strengthen unionism and uh, the British that are on this um, on this island. Uh, if, if we were to align with the UK, then that would be one of the rules that we would have to change. We would have to allow Stripping. entertainers, mm-hmm. uh, strippers, to mm-hmm. get their... Um, mm-hmm. to get their genitals but I'm stage. sure just in reading all of the chat about it I'm sure that they said that that's part of the show and they were very, very clear about it so yeah. people know what they're getting and if it's if it's clearly part of the show then they were booked then if they say that it's 18 plus and it's in a private room you know mm-hmm. and, and there's security and there's all of the management and nobody's being exploited and all the rest of it then like if it is the law that they're not allowed to then it's a stupid law you know, and it's just adding to repression and misogyny. And, you know, actually, the thing is, laws like that, um, unless they're there to protect, for example, children or people under 18, which 100% law that up. But whenever it comes to, like, consenting adults, 18 plus, whenever you add the, the hysteria and the shame and all the rest of it, I think that it's actually sexualizing the human body more, not less. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it's like, I suppose it's like the breastfeeding debate and things as well, where people are like, put that away, you know, or like, uh, you know, adding like a, a sexualization to it, even though mm-hmm. it's like a natural thing, you know. I live for the moment to hear that in the cafe. Yeah, because it's like, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will I'll probably embarrass the woman more than anything because yeah. I'm going to start a physical fight. Yeah. <laughs> Go feminism! Yeah. Your titties are not... Uh, something to be ashamed of. <laughs> Child leads date two. <laughs> I, you ha- I'll have to practice it. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. It's if not s- in our shelf, really, because it's not really no, something in our are, lives. <laughs> titties aren't there. Um, but no, what are what are we uh, what are, beyond the beyond the the penises that we sort of throw we, beyond the cocks that we sort of threw in in, in the van on the way here? Because like, oh, we're going to talk about the definition. That'll be great. Mm-hmm. Um, what else are we planning to talk about this week? So uh, our podcast. Not last week, but the week before with the gorgeous Kate Nickel. Got on the news, did you see? Yes, I did see that. <laughs> no. Caused a little bit of outrage, but all for the not the reasons that we expected as well. Because we're okay with a bit of outrage because sometimes it can be outrageous, the things that we talk about. Which there shouldn't be, again, in the, in the rest of the world. But here, for some reason, sometimes those topics can be spicy. I, th- but, I thought her talking about uh, the uh, decriminalisation of drugs would have been the thing. Yeah, or, or the snog marry of Void. There's so many. Well, she sort of made it that it wasn't. But she did a brilliant a bit, I think, job. I, well, I think a bit of a miss, really. I think to be able to to um, give a, I don't know. I think as a politician to be able to lean into spice, mm-hmm. uh, which and and, and uh, out of the whole uh, conversation, that was the only one bit where I was like. Fuck's sake, Kate, come on, talk about riding Michelle O'Neill with you. <laughs> you know, we're we looking, didn't give that. We were, we, sent, want, we were deliberately. We don't easy want dumpster. Belfast Telegraph. We want, uh, we want uh, national media. You know, that's what we want. We want front page stuff here, Kate. So I think that um, during that story where she says that um, when she was talking about all the, the criminalization of drugs and stuff like that, yeah. 
and that not making the news uh-huh. because Crazy. something else overshadowed it. And then history that, repeated the, itself. Yeah, it literally happened. <laughs> the, exa- the exact same thing happened because just talking about that story. Yeah. And it made the news. It's yeah. the story of our land. It's like, don't worry about that. Don't worry about civil rights. It's actually that we, that these people hate each other. Don't worry about uh, whatever else has happened. It's actually, this is the story. It's yeah. just, it's, it's. I in... think papers are actually tabloids. Yeah. 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 Fucking right. Like yeah. we are. We're always very happy to um to uh, be in most of the papers, um to promote our projects and to be able to spread the word and our message mm-hmm. and all the rest That's of it. Our job. But at the same time, again, really quite uh, questionable a lot of the reactions. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think that that um we enjoyed it because it was fun to share uh, memes of Jim Allister and all the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, for anyone that didn't see it, uh, basically uh, the uh, the Belfast Telegraph. Uh, journalist reached out to the TUV to say what do you think about all of this um, about it was Jim Kate. Allister being cuddly yes it was the- Kate basically saying <clears throat> wouldn't it be great to be able to work with, with Jim wouldn't it be great if he wasn't a fucking arsehole wouldn't it be great paraphrasing but no, <laughs> she didn't use I, those exact I mean, words <laughs> it's, not, it's not a reach to say Jim Allister it's his brand no I know you can say it but yes. I'm just saying that it's, she didn't specifically say that oh yes you yes, know, yes, yes, so yes. that's important to make clear yes there's <laughs> so me we'll reaching, back in it again. reaching for the next <laughs> Belfast live yeah um, but yeah really 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 fun to share. It's just, it is, it's it's quite sad. It's really unfortunate because she was speaking about the constitutional question. She was speaking about some of the key policies when it came to the alliance and what they're trying to do. Um, she was speaking about a broken system, um, uh, which is funny because most that have been set up mm-hmm. by the government that are currently in control here um, are broken. Look at uh, Palestine right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but she spoke about all of those things and then we, we got into this sort of silly back and forward. I, I think J- Jim Allister, in terms of the, the media landscape, it's some, he's got some sort of magnetic force that with, like he's a one-seat wonder, with zero uh, mandate, he is on every show. But mm-hmm. the irony is that like the comment that a spokesperson for the TUV made was uh, about how uh, they, they weren't interesting in the interested in the self they have more important things to do than uh, be whatever patron or condescended to by a self-promoting alliance party member mm-hmm. and it's just like dude you m- very much misunderstand what your role is in mm-hmm. terms of the issues that your constituents and that society cares about mm-hmm. and wants to talk about therefore it's important to go and have conversations and speak in the media and do all of those things and then ironically that actually it's Jim Allister, the one seat wonder, who ends up being quoted and ends up being in everything as well. Oh. Uh, just generally being raging about stuff. He's bitter. Yeah. yeah. And think- that's, that's a big problem with things like the Nolan show. and mm-hmm. the, It's the fact that there should be more of a balanced yeah. argument. Mm-hmm. But the fact that like from the representative parties, now they mightn't get representation from those parties or MLAs coming forward from the big parties or mm-hmm. whatever to, to speak on things but how is it that as you said like someone from the TUV mm. that do- doesn't have that, that big of of a vote because nobody else will go on that show I uh, think that's, that's part of the problem as well created, um, it's clickbait bullshit they've created a um, an unsafe environment you know yeah. there's other shows in this country that can still get to the root um, sort of questions uh, that the people want to ask but they um they uh, they then don't have to they, they don't have to lean into that or at least they don't lean into that so politicians don't have to be fearful you know uh-huh. that uh, local people who want to spread a message of anything else but division uh, um, have a chance to, to to go on and trust mm-hmm. that they're not going to be uh, bearded into some sort of mad debate you know I think the question about balance I feel like we've talked about this before maybe but I suppose this is better context for it I'm all for balance but I'm not for balance whenever it means that the BBC have to go and seek out some opposing opinion to something that is, for example, protected in equality law. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know? So I just don't believe that there is a reason why you need to represent homophobic views whenever you're talking about something that uh, uh-huh. is about the queer community, for example. Mm-hmm. I think if you're speaking out, like the example we had was whenever we were talking about Carrot Grammar mm-hmm. and the, your experiences of what uh, was attuned to uh, conversion therapy to an extent of saying, mm-hmm. oh, you, maybe you should join Scripture Union. 
you know, because mm -hmm. you're a bit too gay, you know, like, and it's like, well, we need to reach out to the Presbyterian Church for balance to talk about that. It's like, no, you don't. You're just giving an account, you know, m maybe that's the journalistic rules, mm -hmm. but if that's the case, the rules are wrong or mm -hmm. the rules need to have some sort of a hierarchy put into place where there's exceptions to that. Yeah. Because where you're talking about something that is harmful and triggering and somebody's giving their individual personal account, you don't need to reach out to the Presbyterian Church to comment. Mm -hmm. You know, all you're doing mm -hmm. is potentially fueling a fire and then we get back into the fact that these newspapers and other, uh, uh, you know, titles are funded by advertising. They're no longer news broadcasting mm -hmm. services. At the end of the day, people don't buy papers anymore. They click online and they sell advertising, yeah. it, with both within the paper and, and digitally. But that is now the governing force that decides what they talk about or not. So it means that although there are amazing journalists out there and we've got great friends as journalists, uh, the, the profession in general has lost a lot of integrity for that reason and it must be very frustrating for those great people to be working yeah. in that environment. It, so It's worse that there's shows like that happening on the BBC mm -hmm. because as a public, yeah, like funded, I don't know anyone who's getting anything out of it. Yeah. And it do, it's doing more harm than it's doing Completely good. Completely Well, agree. I think they would say that it's investigative journalism. <laughs> Um, well, uh, yes, they would but say that. They yeah. would say that, and it may not come. They may not come from the perspective or the with the energy that we would uh, when it comes to some of those issues. Um, but that's what they would say. Yeah. So they would say that they're. Um, so I'm just trying to provide a little bit of balance. Here. <laughs> um, your balance up your hole. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I do. I think the one thing that we do have to be very. Happening at the <laughs> but do. <laughs> You know, something being shoved up a hole in those toilets. Yeah. Hopefully, it wasn't the toilets. Um, but no, there is. Uh, there's definitely. There's definitely um, a, a problem with that. You know, so it it it, it inhibits more than maybe it kind of um, mm -hmm. it empowers. Mm -hmm. Do you know what actually just popped in my head randomly about? Uh, said, sorry, back to the definition. Um, but uh, in the comments that I was reading of people talking about it, and they said about how. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of people going home, a lot of women, particularly going home to husbands and boyfriends and mm -hmm. partners and all the rest of it. And people commenting to say, oh, I don't think my partner would want me to be there. That actually little nugget of it blew it's my mind mad. a little bit. Again, back to the misogyny piece. It's like the, 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 the concept of jealousy mm -hmm. and things, I think, is people just get so deeply wrong here. Do you know what I mean? It's like the more jealous you are, the more you're exhibiting your insecurity mm -hmm. in a relationship. And so what if somebody goes and looks at a cock on a show? You know, who cares? Mm -hmm. It's like they're not riding them. I think like obviously that's different. But if you're if you're taking in entertainment, it's like people that um, same the other way around, you know, people that won't let their partner go on a stag do because they're likely to go and like see a strip show or something like that. Or people are like, I'll not go to the strip show because I don't think my partner would like it. Wise up, to, you know. You take it one step further. I used to stand in bloody sal years ago. I uh, worked as a, a hairstylist, and uh, I used to stand in, in salons. People would love their hair; they'd be living for their new look. And then they'd be in a couple of days later to say that actually their partner didn't like it. I mean, I'm sorry. Leave the person. Yeah. Leave the person. Who is this person? Like, I think it, it's, there's there's not a problem. Back to the definition. There's not a problem uh, going to a show and looking at some uh, bloody massive willies. Um, but equally so, there's it's it, there's it's the line I think is when it moves from, uh, it moves into sort of more of an intimate space. You know, I think like there was a picture of a girl that's been um, sort of shared, and I actually haven't seen who the girl is because mostly I've seen someone superimposed a drag queen over the, her head, um, which is very sweet of the guys. But it's someone sort of standing, um, like she's going like well she's she's sort of uh, she's sort of on her knees in amongst a, a group of very large penises um dreams but <laughs> um but she she's there and she is touching one of them and you sort of think even that though we're we're having fun it is a gag we've all had a drink and i don't think if you go home to your partner and they have a problem with that you should be anywhere near that energy mm -hmm. i think it's like it's it's you know trust as well you know, like ultimately the best way to trust somebody is just trust that is just know that it doesn't matter what they do unless that it's yeah. like actually having uh, emotional con contact or like sexual contact with another human being. But that's completely different to um, digesting entertainment, I think. Or watching I porn. That's I a key point a as well. There's people that won't let their partner watch porn because they're jealous of it. I've been in those relationships. I've been like a secret wanker, you know, and it's like. 
You're still a secret wanker, love. <laughs> I've already had three this morning. Um, I've just never stopped being like 15. Um, but anyways, uh, my penis and coming aside, um, I I think that's mad that that then a lot of people would would um, say that that's cheating. Like we watch things on YouTube and you're like, um, you know, it's it's like some wee girl that's like sitting going through whatever they've read online, mm-hmm. and that's so much of the energy is around that. Mm-hmm. You know, even people going out where they're like, oh, I wouldn't trust my girl there, and you're like, well, then don't be with them. You mm-hmm. know, I actually I would go one step further to say that there's a separation between sex and love. Yeah. It's that same thing about sort of the intimacy. Intimacy for me is not how Americans speak about intimacy, which is like a polite way to have to say sex. Mm-hmm. Really, it's a different. <clears throat> actually, Maddie talked about it. Um, mm. Matthew Cavan talked about it on the podcast that we did with them just before Christmas. It was wonderful. Go back and watch it. But they talked about how they really struggle. So they're really good at having sex. They can do all of that. They're up for all of that. But they actually really struggle to connect uh, intimately with a partner that that same separation should exist in the world as well you know that actually you can have some fucking fun you know you can do what is naturally in you and it doesn't it doesn't say anything about the other person mm-hmm. you know it's not it's I don't know I think maybe I was always in the past and a lot of gays were in this way too where you're in a same body relationship so maybe it's a directly comparable thing maybe it's something to do with like penis size maybe it's something like that I think it's the Again, I, I'm not ever going to... I'm, I was about to apologise for being a broken record, but like it's such a big issue that so many things in society hang off that I'm never going to apologise for it. But it's back to uh, the, 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 the hook and the, the shroud of organised religion and therefore the patriarchy on our society and a bit of capitalism as well, because whilst completely down for people who are... In a monogamous relationship, and that's what they want. That is a yeah. section of society. Go for it. Yeah, Love it. Choose yeah, that. absolutely. But my problem is with the defaults that we place on society, mm-hmm. and the default says, you know, sort of, if we look at it from a very, very clinical perspective, it says one man, one woman, equals two point four children, equals obedience in society, equals you know, like being a good little citizen, paying your taxes and contributing to the GDP. Mm-hmm. But whenever you... Uh, but then what that also means often is uh, a, 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 a traditionally more successful or money-earning man getting to his 40s or 50s, having a midlife crisis, trading in the way for a younger model. You know, families broken up. Like, so many instances where monogamy doesn't work, but yet our society has no alternative for it, where there is mm-hmm. shame and secrecy attached to... Not necessarily even open relationships, but, you know, there's that sort of trope that goes around where the woman in her sort of 60s or 70s knows fine rightly that her husband is riding all around him. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, well, we'll stay together for the children. And it's like, well, what about if there was different ways of having those conversations that meant that you could take those things into account and people valued a relationship or a marriage or a long term, Mm -hmm. whatever, for what it was. But then there was also like a knowledge and an understanding and so long as there was promises of safety as well, mm-hmm. you know, with things like STIs and all the rest of it, that 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 could be like talked about in a grown up way in a range, which would mean that those relationships would potentially last longer mm-hmm. and be stronger and be more empowering for both people. But that then that families could stay together where it was the sex and the unrealistic uh, goals that we put on people. That is actually mm-hmm. the thing often that breaks people apart and makes the trust go, mm-hmm. you know, because you can have both of those things at once. Mm-hmm. But I just think that in in many societies, we just don't have a place for that at all. You know, it's like sort of progressive to a level that actually heads explode. But I think eventually we will get there. We will look back on the way that we are now in the future and be like, we were weird. You know, like it's like now we look back and say, oh, you know, somebody showing off a bit of ankle was considered highly uh, uh, yeah, no, scandalous. Sort of funny, isn't it? Now we're like, that's a gag. I think the same things will happen about a lot of the ways that we do things now. I like the way, I, th- I sort of, uh, I, I agree with you. Um, but I I like the way that Emma spoke, our friend Emma years ago spoke about relationships. Yes. About how they complete. Yeah. And maybe we've spoken about this before as well, but that it's not, it doesn't have to be this drama. Uh-huh. It doesn't have to be that you hate someone, that you have to like split your friends. And that there's, I also think that some people are just kind of addicted to that. Yeah. Agreed. It's like an attention thing and it's a lack of something else. It's not actually about the person either. But that re- relationships often just come to a place where they have completed, you yeah. know, that actually, uh, this is sort of the stage where we should really work on this. Um, but should we? 
Yeah. You know, should we um, either reassess or should we actually just um, actually be friends? Mm -hmm. You know, like maybe maybe um, maybe there should be more more space for that because there's so many people out there that are just so deeply deeply unhappy. Mm -hmm. um, that's why you you uh, give us fucking life because you yeah. you are couple goals. <laughs> yeah, you really are. You and Nicole are just such sweeties, and the way that you yeah. speak about it, we've said this before as well. But it's just it's wonderful. It's so sweet. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so many people that absolutely just. Despise their partner. Yeah. Despise I, them. Like, I can think of people that we've sort of been around in the last couple of years that, mm -hmm. like, it would scunder the life out of you how they speak to each other. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like arguing with each other, like, really in quite a putting each other down type mm -hmm. way w with other people in the room. Like, I just want to just exit immediately whenever mm -hmm. that happens. But it's kind of just like their normal way of getting on together, you mm -hmm. know. And I find that just so sad because it's just like, listen, if you don't like each other, just break up, mm -hmm. you know, but then it's also, like, oh, but we've got a mortgage. Oh, but we've got this and, you know, it'd be like more inconvenient. But that's what they, whoever the fuck they are, want. Uh -huh. They want the mortgage. They want the multiple children. They want the crippling debt. They want you to be uh, subservient. So uh, that you... A risk averse GDP yeah. It's like adult peer pressure. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like when you're a teenager, it's drinking, it's trying a few drugs, it's mm -hmm. this, that and the other. Like, when you're an adult, it's like you're looking at everyone around you, like doing this, you know, getting a mortgage, getting a mm -hmm. house, you know, like getting engaged. Like Milestones. X, X, Y, and Z. And you go, right, well, I need to get my shit together. I need to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to be in this type of career. I need to do that because such and such is doing it and everybody's going, okay, it's not brilliant that they're doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need to do that. You Otherwise know? you're seen as a failure. Yeah. Whereas actually, and then there's people that don't get out of relationships, don't get out of jobs. You know, like this whole like quitting is for losers or whatever the phrase is now. I've, I've got it so far out of my head. Quitting is for winners. Give something a good go and make sure your integrity is in place that you've tried your best and you know you've tried your best. But when you're like trying to like, keep pushing it uphill and it's not going anywhere. There's no, just get out. That applies to that job that you hate, you know, and that is a, sometimes a place of privilege because sometimes people cannot quit the job because they've got a kid and it's the only job they can get mm -hmm. and all the rest of it. No, totally. But if all of their bets are off and the only reason you're staying in a job is because you like the, the, the maybe the company ha is prestigious and you like the fact that you can say that you work for mm -hmm. that company, mm -hmm. which I can think of a few examples, um, even in our lives uh, quite recently. Yeah. Uh, I can think of people that have stayed in relationships where they clearly don't like each other, but they're right. afraid to be by themselves, do you know? Or yeah. people that keep banging on with a project or a creative something or whatever, when actually the time is to say, do we need to completely change this? Do we need to reevaluate it? Because mm -hmm. it's like there's this, this fear of failure somehow, rather than championing actually the ability to to pivot, the ability to evolve, to mm -hmm. change, to grow. And again, with that, to be able to come back and say, hang on, hang on, are we are we doing more harm than good? Is this worth all of our time? You know, we, we need to have opportunities to make mistakes rather than this like constant fear state that I think people are in because often people who maybe don't have th the same situation will will gossip and they'll judge and they'll put somebody down, you know, mm -hmm. for something that maybe they don't really understand. And I just think we all need to stop talking shit about each other and mind your own business mm -hmm. to a large extent as well with that stuff. And um, um I think uh, the the problem there is that if you're in that type of relationship where you're not getting anywhere and you are good for each other and you're just staying in it for the mm -hmm. sake of it, for the look of, oh, well, <clears throat> I'm, I've got my shit together, mm -hmm. then there probably already isn't a lot of communication there. Yeah. yeah. So to have the 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 right mindset to, to go, look, that's reassess this. I don't yeah. think this is, mm -hmm. it is far less likely to happen. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's like this thing that keeps spiraling and it, they multiply each other. Yeah. In terms of the more distant and like toxic the relationship becomes, the less likely that it's going to like end anytime soon until yeah. something extreme happens. Yeah. Like someone cheats or yeah. someone, yeah. someone breaks one of the prearranged um, societal constructs, but rules. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, uh, and then, and then that's where the drama is. Yeah. yeah. I would appeal to people to just take a, take, um, because I'm sure this isn't actually a question that we've had, but I'm sure it's really helpful for people that are, that are listening or, yeah. or watching. Mm -hmm. But I appeal to people to sort of take a couple of steps back and look at your family. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. Are you from what would have been described as a broken home? 
assess that. Uh, do you have daddy issues? Speaking of which, we have a daddy issues candle which smells gorgeous and it is available at anotherworldbelfast.com forward slash shop. Yeah, most of us have um, daddy issues but anyway. Yes, you know. um, but, do, do you have, but do you have daddy issues? Is there something else issues. going on? Are you, do you feel like you are from... Uh, you're coming from maybe a failure space and or that your parents did and then they sort of built to where they built and you have to keep that, you know, you have to keep that level. Know that it's imagined mm-hmm. and uh, mostly actually go back to those very same parents and reassess that relationship just to say, um, just to sort of get it straight, to sort of uh, re-enter as an adult and to be able to um, maybe remove yourself a wee bit from impressing them to impressing your soul to really like working on yourself mm-hmm. and doing the best for for you and then in turn that partner that you have or the child that you have or the workplace that you've got um it's it sort of it, it will it will feed out from there it's like rupaul's uh line of wisdom in every single show and that's if you can't love yourself then how the hell are you meant to love somebody else mm-hmm. loving yourself starts with making the right choices yeah do you know it's it comes with the power of saying no and whether that is saying no to your situation, whether it's your relationship or your work or your or your relationship with your family, whatever the hell, or that shitty friendship that is taking more than it's given and mm-hmm. always has done, you know, or and, and and also saying no to opinions that you picked up as a kid. This was mm-hmm. a real thing for me. Was like I knew until I got to uh, maybe my mid thirties, I think, and actually moved out of this country. No, it wasn't. I moved out of this country. I moved to London at thirty, and it was only once I moved away, which. Get out if you can. Come back, but do get out and try mm-hmm. and do at least six months or a year somewhere else if possible, if mm-hmm. your life allows it. But uh, it was only whenever I actually got out that I was able to broaden my mind and hear other perspectives and voices from outside this country and be able to go, hang on a second, do I really think that? You know, question mm-hmm. all of those defaults. Question all of your defaults about everything from sexuality to gender and media opinions and political thoughts and all the rest of it. Try and go and inward listen. to sit and listen. Yeah. yeah see, I was saying this, um, right, you know, where you have these random thoughts in the shower where you've got no screens and stimuli and all the rest of it. So you can actually like your, your letting your brain go on free fall is uh, or free flow is a really powerful tool. Yeah. And I came out of the bathroom the other day saying, uh, I've just realised, I mean, I've always said that a lot of the stuff that we do is based on my obsession with being right. <laughs> right. And the, the irony is that, the w- it's like you know the way the Hulk is they say that you know how come you're not angry anymore and he says like and I'm paraphrasing he says no no I'm always angry that's how I've got to control my turning into the Hulk mm-hmm. Bruce Banner or whatever his name is says but you're aware of that emotion and you can manage it yeah uh-huh. exactly and I think that that's kind of the thing it's like the key to never being wrong is uh, always being prepared to be wrong <laughs> do you know what I mean like knowing that if you want to be right the best way to be right is be right in terms of humanity and society, you know? And ethics, yeah. And ethics. Okay. I can't believe what you said about the the shower thing. Like, about that's when we're not stimulated, we've, we've not got... Mm-hmm. Have I not said that to you before? No, and that that is just, mm. well, like, boom, that's why it happens. Yeah. And yeah. It's also why it happens Driving. when you, when you go, like, a run or something. Uh-huh. Or like, yeah. Get away from your screen. Like, I was, what, I was writing about and this recently. Yeah. Oh, it's because... Whenever we were doing the, I was like, I surely I've said this on the podcast. It ha- I haven't. Whenever we were doing the lecture at University of Ulster, that was one of the things that we put in. It's about being creative and about self-care and things like that. It's like the conditions that you need to create for yourself in order to be creative mm. or have good ideas or know how your head's at and all the rest of it is get the fuck away from screens. Ideally, go for a walk in nature. But who has the time for that? Oh, this is so bad to you out there walking children. Yeah, walking in children in nature. Yes. <laughs> oh, you know what? You both call me losers. And I don't see you out there walking children in nature. I never call you're children. You're not a loser. No. That's why you're here today. Don't, you forgot who you I know were. I'm here today. We I'm just telling you how you it is. You forgot. That'll be you saying. Shout out to Tammy Bryan. Yeah. She's yeah. probably watching. Yeah. But, um, hey, but Tommy. yeah. It's like why you have good ideas when you're driving, when you're washing the dishes, yeah. you know. And it's long, and and sometimes it's like having music on or watching something on a iPad or a TV or whatever in the kitchen takes you out of that. One of the things I love now, particularly, is coming home and like cooking dinner, and Connor will go upstairs and sit and make a piece of social media content or whatever. Um, and if I'm just sitting farting away by myself making the the dinner. It just gives you this like time. You need to let your you, the, oh, that's the thing. You need to be bored. 
mm-hmm. and part of class. being and, and being bored is what's like being in the bath and stuff as well there's like you you actively need to set those things and then let your mind just sort of mm-hmm. see where it goes or start thinking about a problem and then just without all of the noise that's the time whenever you can analyze it the best I love that. If you yeah. have a fear of that, and this isn't speaking to you necessarily, but just in, in general, if you have a fear of that, that's a question you need to ask mm-hmm. yourself too. You know, there's something going on uh, yeah. that you, that you, because I know that I actually really suffer from this. I feel like I constantly have to be stimulated. That's mm-hmm. um, so why I was in the definish. Um, <laughs> but I... <laughs> but we so you will, stick on the BBC. <laughs> like like um, the rest of our country and city, uh, and especially West Belfast, we will eventually get over it. <laughs> Um, but yes, but no, I feel like I sort of, I, I have to be really aware of that because I run the risk of always having to be uh, stimulated. <laughs> You're a fucking cunt. <laughs> just, just have, I didn't get much sleep last so night. Yeah. No, you That's don't, been a secret you don't again, isn't to, it? You, you don't have to say sorry. Um, Sean uh, makes it, just makes a point, not, not just of yawning, but one of not covering his face whenever we're talking and then doing it straight into your fucking microphone. <laughs> Um, if you want to use the service as a sixteen twenty audio, they are reasonably good, um, and they're Not very great. reasonably priced. <laughs> uh, we do love Sean, but God love me, you're do- you're just working. Yeah, like you don't have it. So any of this time that you need, that's just away from everything to be creative and think and all the rest of it, you don't have that. Like you're constantly on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like creative time is sort of scheduled in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah on but that that's way. okay. Now's that, the that's... time to sit and mm-hmm. do that. Yeah, yeah, but I will do that. I, I'll go like right. There's an hour here to play guitar or like, um, or four hours a week for us to just meet up and and jam and like, and that will also be a wee bit structured too in terms of, um, if there's not a gig happening or a festival happening or like, um, studio session coming up like that we don't have to practice for a specific mm-hmm. thing it'll just be like let's just see where it takes us and just yeah. like fucking let the creative juices flow mm-hmm. perfect like in the dabney ah! <laughs> <laughs> i didn't even see that one coming i love it um, <laughs> love that their creative juices flow it actually says oh the same darling um it actually says on the back of this on this sean Haggerty cup Sco- what the fuck was he doing score a few goals sniff a few holes have you read this yeah I think it's one of his characters. Oh, is wow. it? Oh, it's Decky the Gaffer. It actually says Decky the Gaffer. <laughs> oh, I maybe like, do you know when um, people join Drag Race, like uh, <laughs> uh, season 14 or whatever, yeah. and they're like, hey, it's, you know, uh, Raja or whatever. Uh, well, I may be there, so I'm going to have to go back and, and look at all of his lovely stuff. What does it say? Sniff a few holes. Score a few goals, sniff Spare a few holes. holes. Uh-huh. <laughs> maybe it was him that did that graffiti. Do you remember? <laughs> okay, I thought you were going for another Devonish one there. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking of talking of Raja actually. <laughs> what we're gonna talk about next week is uh we're gonna talk about Raja and our connection now. <gasps> our yes. few degrees of separation mm-hmm. from Raja, from Manila, from a load of other queens. We're gonna be talking about the new staff that we've hired. Uh-huh. Very exciting. You would have heard you would have read about it by the time you listened to that, you would have read about it in Gay and I. In fact, if you are listening today, uh, Gay and I is gonna be out. Yes, today, isn't go, it? Get so go get yourself a copy. Go get yourself a copy and thanks all... a load of Daniel. And no, the editor, Daniel, uh, is so very, very sweet. Uh, But we've got uh, a couple of pages there to talk about our new project and all the rest of it. We've chosen them to kind of launch that. Mm -hmm. Uh, It will be um, on, they've got an issue online you can read, but also Mm -hmm. you'll be able to see all the links and stuff on our page. So go on to Another World Belfast and find that. Um, But yes, so uh, within that, we talked about the Greenhouse, our our new project in the city centre that's going to be opening soon. Mm -hmm. And some of the staff, or not some of the, uh, the two staff that we've hired. um, And lots of, Mm -hmm. Uh, lots of um, wonderful uh, kind of uh, developments when it comes to Belfast 2024. So next week in the podcast, we'll be talking all about that. And about our strategic partners that we are really excited to have on board. Yes. And give you a wee bit more context around that too. Mm-hmm. Well, all very exciting. Um, thank you again for listening. Um, if I can, if I can, t- I can, because um, it's our show. Um, so if we can take just one second to alert you to the fact that we do have merch, um, that you can buy our t-shirts and our mugs and our candles, which are gorgeous. They're soy and they're hand poured and they're wonderful um, but if you want to buy any of that we would love to take your money mm-hmm. um, if you want to just give us your money right now we are going through paint at a rate of knots yep. and for all that were part funded by the council that was just for those two roles or just for uh, actually ours and their their two roles mm-hmm. um, but we are still an independent organisation who have a budget of about a fiver at, 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 at any time and it's £25 for 10 litres of brilliant matte white paint so you can either like go and buy us some paint throw it into us or give us some money on our cost of giving fundraiser which is linked below 
And uh, no. you can buy merch either uh, online at our website or you can go to our lovely friends at Bullet Hotel. Oh, who have yes. a great selection of merch available there in the shop. <laughs> well, that's the crack. Uh, we actually recently, we heard, um, we are going to round off, but we heard that somebody out there bought someone, we don't want to give any of the details because we don't know how public it is, but a, a, a sort of very wealthy angel um, donor donor uh, has came on with a local charity local another local independent uh, organisation doing great work uh, doing amazing work and uh, they've reached out to buy their building anonymously yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you are in the building buying space yeah. uh, if you're very wealthy and you just think we're fucking brilliant mm-hmm. then um, give us some of that um, I don't know you please buy our building for us we love your, that write it off your tax <laughs> well, bill or something <laughs> you know we'll, we'll, we'll work yeah. in a way that you a building, can daddy. that's a thing we need, uh, yeah, I want to actually building, say about daddy. that briefly we're wrapping up so so sorry I'll say this very quickly but we we one of our uh, vo- wonderful volunteers works for KPMG is a tax advisor and I was asking recently about the the implications for a business if they donate either stock or cash to charity so I've got it in writing and I'm, we're going to be sharing about it in the next uh, couple of weeks just in time for coming up to tax year end if you run a business whether it's a hairdresser's whether mm. it's a marketing agency no matter what it is if you're Paul in profit Huh? A podcast studio. A podcast studio, yes. exactly, just saying. <laughs> but if you run your business in profit, so if you have got profit to report for the year, you then pay corporation tax on that. If you donate that profit to charity or some of it, that comes off your corporation tax. Yeah. So if you're coming to the end of your financial year and you have profit, give loads of it away. Mm-hmm. Give it to a charity because that means that you're paying it in corporation tax anyway. You get that marketing essentially back for that because mm-hmm. you get the corporate social responsibility. If you donate it to somebody who's good at social media, we'll say thank you. So give us your money, buy us a building or give us surplus stock. If you give us stock or stuff that you have bought to use and you give it to us, you can reclaim the full cost of that back off your tax. Yes. So do give us a shout and ask the question if you want more information on it. I have a, a document that's been written by one of our uh, amazing volunteers and, and just another shout out to our volunteers and everybody. Uh, also the incredible, isn't it, ATS uh, animation that came to us last ATL, week? Is, I ATL, think. ATL, sorry. They were very sweet. Uh, amazing company came and volunteered with us. So if your company wants to come <coughs> and volunteer and help, do that. If you want to hear more about that, uh, like really legal and really positive for society tax break that exists, give us a shout and we'll give you some more information on it. But uh, other than that... If you don't, we're not interested. We're not... uh, Sorry, I was going to say we're not interested if you don't have any money. That was not the way that that was meant to be phrased. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, We are very interested even if you don't have any money. Yeah. So come and volunteer. Give your time because we don't have any fucking Or your skills. But uh, give your time, give your skills. Um, And if you... um, if you're now, I don't know, funded by your daddy, uh, doing a medical degree and someday in future you have a lot in the bank, then you know where we are because yes. we're really, really trying our best. And we want to be as independent as possible. Well, we'll see you next week. We're going to yes. uh, now release, are we releasing on Fridays at 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock, yes. because yes. 6 is a wee, a wee bit sticky where we're sort of It was always... getting up at 8 anyway. Yes. <laughs> so let's make so, it. Uh, so it's now 8 o'clock on Fridays. You can catch us, you can see, you can uh, watch uh, on YouTube. Uh, remember to subscribe, ring the bell, do all the bits. You can also listen on Spotify and wherever else and you get your podcasts mm-hmm. just if you ever go on and follow search party band Belfast is that mm-hmm. what you're called link yeah. below as well and uh, and also search for 1620 audio who helped to produce here that's the lovely Sean so uh, until next time show some love thank you bye bye mm-hmm.